uh, Google had an event uh, early uh, early in the week uh, where they had disclosed. Well, I mean, actually, let me step back. Uh, Google had talked uh, about Bard, uh, and I related that, and they showed a bunch of what I would consider consumery uh, scenarios, and they are the leader in in search uh, by by a mile. But this event uh, went in and talked about their their enterprise play. Uh, Google has cool. Google Cloud. Obviously, they have Google Workspace. Uh, the first thing that came out was uh, an API for uh, developers called uh, Palm. And I hate to think of like face Palm. I, I can't help it. Uh, I didn't help uh, uh, name this, but the big L uh, means large and the big M means uh, model. And Google is really good at creating uh, APIs. I mean, all the way back, um, gosh, when Google search started, uh, they uh, led the charge in many respects uh, with API-based uh, computing. Uh, they also, in addition, uh, announced uh, what's uh, what's called um, Maker uh, Suite. And Maker Suite is an, uh, what they're trying to create is an easy-to-use um, platform that I would say normals uh, can use, where instead of, instead of getting uh, right in and having to know, you know, doing what my son does with uh, with C++, it, it's a little bit more uh, drag and drop and and uh, and text based. It's it's pretty much everything you would expect uh, to, to hear from from Google. Uh, the other thing that they brought out uh, is that Google is notorious for not notorious, but they're really good in Google Cloud at doing the uh, the land and expand uh, related to uh, data uh, for enterprise customers. And they have a tool called uh, Vertex AI, which is the east to west uh, total platform for AI, all the way from ingest to running uh, running inference models and everything in between. And then finally, uh, they show some really slick uh, uh, demonstrations of uh, Google Workspace. Uh, Google is the number two productivity package on, uh, on the planet. Uh, a lot of students, uh, a lot of enterprises uh, use them, and they're in direct competition with, uh, with Microsoft. Holistically, I think the big picture here is that generative AI is creating incredible new use cases that help enterprises, A, increase revenue, B, decrease costs, C, increase velocity of getting uh, things done, and I would say D, getting closer to uh, your, uh, your customer in a more natural way that satisfies them. So I'm super excited that Google, you know, threw their ax into the sea and we have something to uh, compare against uh, uh, everybody else like Microsoft and Salesforce. Yeah, there was a lot that came out from uh, Google this week. And I think the market was pretty reasonable to have expected it, Pat. I mean, the BARD initial launch, I think we would agree was not, did not go to plan. It did not go to plan for Google. And this is a little bit of what happens when you have years and years of work being, uh, you know, prepared for a certain moment in time. And then, you know, it'd be like Tesla's about to launch its next vehicle in 24 months. And then the competition comes out with something that's gonna destroy it in a month. And then all of a sudden they had to announce the car a week later. And so, Google have been working on this, and I think you and I have been pretty out, uh, outspoken about the fact that Google for a long time has really led this category. It was not something that the market necessarily expected. Uh, Microsoft sort of changed the timeline, changed the trajectory, pulled a lot of things forward, and I think Google now is, is looking across its portfolio, its R&D, its research, and its go-to-market plan to figure out what can we bring to market quickly to let the industry, let enterprise, let ev everyone in the cloud space know that we are not going to just allow lying down for Microsoft to have the entire uh, sort of generative AI uh, narrative in market. And so that means they have to hit it from a few ends. They have to hit it for the developers. They have to hit it for the uh, the cloud and the giving the tools. And then of course they need to hit it at the app level 
when Microsoft has been very successful straight away, and we're going to talk more about Microsoft later, so I don't want to over-rotate to them, but this is where the competition lies right now. It's, it really is with Microsoft, is they've been very successful in showing and demonstrating at the app level ways that these tools and technologies are going to be available and usable for your everyday knowledge workers. And so this is what you know Google really needed to lean into with this set of announcements around workspace was what are the sort of things that users that are every day, you know, there's, there's hundreds of millions, is there a billion workspace? It's a huge number of workspace users, but I don't know off the top of my head. But effectively, it's, it's this massive number of users, and what are they going to be able to do with it? Well, if you don't recall for some time now, if you use Gmail, my company, we use Google Workspace. So when you start my writing... Back, I'm, uh, yeah, and my back end is Google Workspace too. And I right. do a Microsoft front end, but there are some things that workspace is just quicker at. Yeah, and the same here. We use a lot of productivity tools from Microsoft, but we use Google for, for our email and a lot of our other uh, workspace. And, and the point is for time now, it's been doing some of the generative. This is the things that I think people are missing now because they're seeing generative in a new light, but you started typing a message, dear Pat, you know, I think we need to, and it would say, you know, maybe move the, and then it would fill in meeting. If it's been doing this kind of generative thing for us for some time, but now it's, you know, we're seeing this at a new level. And so Google's really releasing kind of, hey, this is what it's going to be able to do. Uh, maybe it would be quickly reply to something um, based upon your, your email. Or by the way, you know how it would send you reminders, Pat, like you need to respond to this. Like that was being done with a level of AI, machine learning and generative to kind of understand what's important and what's not, what needs to be. Yeah. So, so I guess the real analysis I want to give here is that Google's been doing this for a little while. This is not new. They're they're pulling features forward and they're making them more advanced. For instance, the idea, ability to maybe uh, con, uh, conversationally give a concept to your doc in, in Google Docs and have it uh, write or or have it proofread or have it edit and rewrite something for you is pretty interesting. We've all seen um, like the stable diffusion demos, but Google is also offering things to be able to like do auto generated images based on. Uh, you know, uh, inputs from you that could be utilized in Google presentations. So Google Workspace is doing a lot of things that are going to sort of mirror what we're going to talk about later with M365. And, and that, I think, is really the pull forward. So the tools and the plumbing and the pixels and the axes, Pat, that were announced are pretty important. But I really think that what the market needed to see and needed to hear one more time is that Google is actually not new to this, has been doing it for a while, and now you're starting to see it pull forward. I do think they were put on their heels, but I also think they will catch up in time, and it will be a very competitive race, which I always say, Pat, is good for everybody. Yeah, competition is really good, and um, I think many of us got bored with AI, and generative AI, natural language models, um, really kind of woke us up to that slumber. 